Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Len Childroth from East Lake in Hopkins, Michigan. And I want to welcome you to my daily podcast. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Uh, the sky is blue, the, the lake is calm. I saw a blue herring just kind of float over the top of the water all the way down the lake. And it is a beautiful day. Today is Saturday, August the 14th. The current temperature is 62 degrees. High today will be 79 with low humidity. The heat index is down today. Low tonight will be 54. It's going to be cool in the evening. It's sunny. But the winds are light and variable right now, and they will be 5 to 10 miles an hour tonight. And it is a beautiful day. Uh, we're planning to have some friends over this afternoon. Uh, we're planning to have a nice dinner. Uh, we're planning to do some fishing. Maybe the kids will do some swimming. We're going to have a very good time. Uh, I'm going to be uh, talking to you this morning again out of Luke chapter 5. It's about Jesus saying that he's going to forgive a man's sins. And the man is a paralytic and he tells him to rise up, take up his bed and walk. To prove that he could forgive sins. but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus uh, we're in Luke Luke chapter 5 <clears throat> Jesus heals a paralytic verse 17 on one of those days as he was teaching the Pharisees and the teachers of the, of the law were sitting there who had come from every village in Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was, was with Jesus to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles in the midst of before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. 
And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question me in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he was lying, had been lying on and went home glorifying God. And amazement seized them all, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. Um, Jesus said earlier in Luke, he said, Today you have, this scripture has been fulfilled in your sight. And now he says, this, the crowd says, we, we have seen extraordinary things today. First of all, the Pharisees and the religious leaders had come really to find fault with Jesus. They hadn't come for any other reason. They hadn't come to believe. They had come to judge. And they're going to call him a blasphemer. <clears throat> and while Jesus is here, a man, a man is carried by four other men to Jesus. He was paralyzed. And they were bringing him to Jesus so that he could be healed. And they couldn't find any way. This, this is a great picture of determination and faith. I wonder in our faith, do we believe enough to work hard? Does it, well, these things are in conflict. There's this work and there's this faith. But, you know, sometimes our works can demonstrate our faith. I think that's what James was saying. It's not about our words, it's about our deeds, it's about our determination, it's about the fact that if I really believe, I will do things. And because they really believed that Jesus could heal their friend, they went and took him, and they went to extraordinary measures to, 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 let, lie, to place him in front of Jesus so that he could heal them. Uh, they're going to climb up some stairs by the house, by the way, this was a typical Palestinian home. There was a stairway on the side of the house that would go up to the roof. And they removed some tiles or some, some of the coverings on the roof. They made a hole in the roof and they let uh, the paralytic down right in front of Jesus. That was the only way they could get him there because the crowd was so great. And Jesus said, when, Jesus, Jesus, when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Because Jesus saw the faith of the men who were, who were lowering him down, and because Jesus saw the faith of the man who was with them, he actually addresses the man. He says that when they saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. So we need to have faith for other people, and we need to have faith ourselves. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The man had come to be healed from his paralysis, but the first thing that Jesus does is that he forgives uh, him of his sins. Um, our greater need is not our physical ailment. Our greater need is our spiritual ailment. We need our sins forgiven. When we get our sins forgiven, other, other things will fall into line. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, who is this who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? That's the very point. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And they looked at Jesus and they didn't believe that he was God, the Son of Man. But, but that's the very point. Jesus made the paralytic walk. He, he is the one who is going to forgive sins. And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? And he said, which is easier to do, or to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise and walk? The truth is that it's actually easier to say your sins are forgiven you, because no one can tell whether anything happened. But when you say, rise up and walk, everyone can see whether or not the, the paralytic was going to rise up and walk. 
And what's going to happen is that's exactly what's going to happen. But that you may know, Jesus said, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And immediately, we have that word that we had earlier, last yesterday, and immediately he rose up before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home to glorifying God. You know, uh, Jesus does have the power. Jesus does have the power to forgive sins. And he demonstrated it because he said to the paralytic, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Now, Jesus is called the Son of Man. And uh, the Son of Man is described in Daniel chapter 7. I want to read it for you. The Son of Man is often about the sorrow and suffering of the Savior. Isaiah 53 would be an example. But there is another description of the Son of Man that's given by Daniel. I saw in, a night, in night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. And he came, it came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, and all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Uh, this is a picture of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He, the Son of Man is that one who would suffer. It says, uh, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've all turned our own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The Son of Man is the person who died for our sins. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised or crushed for my iniquity. The punishment that was due to me was laid upon him, says Isaiah, the Son of Man. And Daniel, the Son of Man, is he is the one who goes before the Ancient of Days. Did you hear what he says, in Daniel, about the Son of Man? Read it one more time. So that we know who Jesus is. <clears throat> I saw in the night visions, Daniel says, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His domin dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. The last verse of this section says this, And amazement seized them all, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. I want you to hear the, these words that Jesus says. They, he asked the question, Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, are to say, rise and walk. And then Jesus says this, but that you may know that the Son of, Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Aren't you glad that Jesus has the authority to forgive sins? He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And immediately he rose before them, picked up what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God. That's who we have. Jesus Christ can forgive our sins. Do you have any sins? Have you, ever, have you ever had a bath? Have you ever had a spiritual bath? Have you ever been saved? Have you ever asked Jesus to come into your life and to save you from your sin? Uh, have you had a, have you washed your hands and your feet? Have you had your sins washed away? First John says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to take them away and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus Christ cleanses us and makes us part of the family forgives all of our sins. We are born again. And Jesus Christ also cleanses us so that we can have fellowship with him. Father, thank you for this gorgeous day. We, we take it as a gift from you and we look forward to enjoying it. We thank you for your word and we thank you for who Jesus Christ is, that he is the son of man. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords, that he is the son of man, that he is the suffering servant, the one who would who was, who was wounded for our transgressions, who was bruised for our iniquity, the one who took our punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven. Thank you, God, for that. 
Uh, I want to pray for those out there that have physical ailments. You know, the man was paralyzed. Uh, many people that Jesus is going to heal, like the leper, had no hope in their lives. Jesus specializes in helping people that have no hope. Maybe we have some friends that need our help. Maybe like the four men who carried the paralytic up the stairs and down through, laid him, lowered him down through the ceiling. Maybe there's some men that we need to help to come know you as Savior, that they need to have their sins forgiven. I pray, Lord, you'd help us to be people who are committed to our friends and our neighbors, and that we will go out of our way to make sure that they hear about the gospel. Help us to do that, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine down upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you his peace today.